It's really fun to sing those ones where you really can belt out that song. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. It's great. It's great to sing unto the Lord, and it's great to, to, to just have that time of rejoicing, because really it's a great time. Amen. Okay. Um, let me put this away. Praise God. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this night. Yeah, we, just pray, we just praise you, Lord. It's just wonderful to sing songs unto you and glorify your name, and, and uh, we just love it, Lord. And Lord, we just pray that tonight you would bless your word, bless this time as uh, we get into your word, and help us to learn more about you. And God, we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So tonight, if you have your Bible, please open it to Psalm number 97. Praise the Lord. And if Florida allows, when we get back to Revelation in the morning, um, then we'll go and get back to Daniel at night. So tonight, it's Psalm number 97. You know, it's kind of interesting when you think about how... how um, long we've had these wonderful psalms with us you know i know as we look in our bibles sometimes we're excited to read them and we you know as, as we say wow you know this is this is new maybe it's new to you because you haven't really read the psalms a lot or sometimes it, it jumps out at you but this particular psalm was written about three thousand years ago just to give you uh some time i mean it's been around for a while they say oldie but goodie amen as they say you know it's a great psalm and I have something to read from, from it for you tonight. Here it is. Psalm number 97. The Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. A fire goeth before him and burneth up his enemies round about. His lightnings enlighten the world. The earth saw and trembled. The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols. Worship him, all ye gods. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of thy judgments, O Lord. For thou, Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous, and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. You know, in that very first verse, it says, The Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice. You know, we don't all often think about the fact that God is, is this commanding all of the earth to rejoice in his presence, all of the earth to celebrate what he has done. You know, he has done great things. And sometimes we, we, we miss out. Yesterday, I didn't, get, I didn't miss out yesterday because somebody called me on the phone and told me to go outside and see the sunset. Did you guys happen to see the sunset yesterday? It was fantastic. I've never seen a more beautiful sunset than the one yesterday. I think that was the most beautiful sunset I've seen in my life. And praise God for that, being able to see that. So thank you for, for calling me up to, to tell me to get outside, and I'll do that. Amen. Amen. It was great. But the Lord reigneth. It says, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad thereof. In Psalm 98, just, just right over, one page over, look at verses um, 4 through 6. It says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of a psalm, with trumpets and the sound of a cornet. Make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. Let the sea roar in the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity. You know, everything, all of creation, and we talked about this before, but all of creation 
is waiting for that day that, uh, that, that the Lord will return. All of creation will celebrate together, and all of creation exalts his name. We lift him up. You know, I, I can tell you that the, the waves of the ocean, as is, is they crash upon the shore, are praising his name. You know, the, the wind as it blows through the trees is praising his name. The, you know, the trees of the field are, are, are growing and, and moving according to his, you know, his plan and praising his name. The, I love it with the branches lifted up. You know, everything in creation praises him. Foolish man sometimes doesn't. Man better get, a, get with it and get things in order because... I'll tell you right now, God is worthy of all praise, glory, and honor, and power forever. We should praise him with everything. All of creation praises him. The stars in the sky, all of his creation gives him glory. It reflects his glory. And we should, we should tell people of him. We should speak of his wondrous, wondrous works. It's a wonderful thing. Isaiah 49 says this. Uh, Isaiah 49 and if you go to verse 13. Amen. You guys are there faster than me. Good job. Isaiah 49 and verse 13. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing. O mountains, for the Lord hath comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. I, I just love how God in his word shows that all of creation is waiting. All of creation is going to rejoice in that day. All of creation is going to celebrate the return of the Lord. You know when Jesus said that if his disciples were quiet, that even the stones would cry out? Understand that that would have happened. Get that, that that would have happened. All of creation groans waiting for that the the that redemption waiting for that day that the redeemer returns it's going to be a wonderful day so don't miss it that everything that you see from this this the wonderful beautiful sky that was painted by god and reflecting his glory yesterday i mean every bit of it sings out praises to his name and he's worthy of all praise and glory and honor forever it says in Psalm 97, verse 2, clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. And I, I was thinking about this, about this, you know, you don't really think about that so much because you think about God as light. And in him, there's no darkness at all. And yet he shields the people from that, the grandeur, that glory, because his very glory, his very light, his very presence, if, if people were to see that up close and personal, it would kill you. Because he is absolutely holy and we're not. So it's amazing how he, he, he shields the people with that, that cloak, that darkness here in, in this, these clouds of darkness. In Psalm 18, we'll look at a few of these psalms that talk about this. It's pretty neat. And Exodus as well. But Psalm 18, verses 11 and 12, it says, He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. And then turn over to Exodus 20. And if you go all the way down to verse 21. Actually, let's look at 20 and 21. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that ye may that his fear may be uh, before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. See, he, you know, it, when he came down upon Sinai, and we'll get to the volcano thing later. Okay, but uh, no, not a volcano. Um, so... Um, you know, Exodus 24 says this. If you go to 24, it talks about it a little bit more in detail. 24, 16 through 18. Well, let's start at 15. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And we just read about that cloud, right, in the darkness that he went into. 
And the glory of the Lord abode on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And, and the sight of the glory of the Lord was like unto a devouring fire on top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. He wasn't in a volcano 40 days and 40 nights. But he was in the presence of Almighty God. And for the people that were down, they, they just saw the mountain on fire. It was darkness. And, but in that mountain was God. His presence was there. It's amazing how God, somebody asked a question before on, on one of the scripture search questions about God's presence, you know, how he reveals himself, yet the Bible says no man has seen God at any time. And it's true, no man has seen God in his fullness at any time. The only one who's seen him is Jesus. But how God chooses to, to represent himself to man, he, is, he has made that clear. He's shown, just like with Ezekiel, you know, when Ezekiel had the vision of, uh, you know, the Lord coming uh, there, when Isaiah had the vision of being in heaven, and of John, when he had the vision, it was all how God chose to reveal himself to them, but not in his entirety. He's the Spirit. The only one who's seen him in his entirety is the Son and the Holy Spirit. You get, you get that? Get the picture of that? So if God were to show himself in his entirety, man couldn't comprehend that. He's a spirit. We're not. We're natural. Uh, you know, we've been made from this dust of the ground here. He breathed into us. He gave us of his spirit, yet we would not have anything. We would be dead. We'd be dead dirt if it wasn't for the Lord. But because of his breath that's breathed into us, we have life. Then uh, when we die, our spirit goes back to the God. He, we go back to him because he's the one who gave it to us. Our body goes back to the earth until the resurrection, and he gives us a brand new body. That's how that works. It's really neat. Okay, um, so Deuteronomy, one more, one more. Deuteronomy chapter 4. I just wanted to point out a few things from this psalm that are really neat. That's God shows us in his word, so we should, we should investigate it and see what he has to say about it to us, because we need to know, or he wouldn't have told us. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, And he came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude, you only heard a voice. And this is what the children of Israel heard. They heard the voice of the Lord. They did not want to hear the voice of the Lord anymore. They were terrified. They were ter After this, they, they were terrified. They told Moses, don't let the Lord speak to us anymore. We're going to die. They were so scared, so terrified. And you're, today, you're probably like, oh, yeah, not me. I wouldn't have been. Yes, you would. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you'd have been the same thing, shaking in your boots as it were. You would have been scared, just like they were. Mount Sinai speaks to the judgment of God, speaks to the wrath of God, speaks to, the, you know, his law that was given that men could not hold perfectly. And yet the cross shows the grace of God and the mercy of God. Same God exhibiting both showing by the law that we cannot do it on our own and showing by grace that he's done it all. It's a good, it's a good thing. It's good news. Okay, back over to Psalm 97. Um, righteousness, and here's another thing about righteousness. It says righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Understand that righteousness and judgment are, when it says the habitation of his throne, that's what his throne is built on, righteousness and judgment. You know, God is the righteous judge. He never makes an unjust or unjust decision. Every decision, every judgment is right and true and good. I had somebody ask me about, what, well, what about, you know, when he had the children of Israel go into the land and, and, and kill all those people? Then what, what about that in the Old Testament? How, that, how does that work? And I said, he's righteous and true. When he used the children of Israel as his, as his instrument of justice on people that had rejected God and turned from mercy and grace. Same thing in this world today. This world today, well, we'll go, let's go to Noah's day first. Noah's day, the ark was built. As they were building the ark, the Bible calls Noah 
a preacher of righteousness. Opportunity is being given. Opportunity. We don't know what Noah preached. We don't. We just know that he was a preacher of righteousness. And it took some time to build that ark. And I'm sure in a place where it never rained, and you have a guy building an ark, that there were probably some questions. Knowing people, people are curious, there probably were some questions. We don't know what the questions were. But we know human nature and humans are very curious. If you had somebody out there building, building a great big giant boat and there's no water around and it never rained, be kind of curious as to what are you doing. It would even, even be more curious when you start seeing animals coming, coming in there and getting loaded into this thing. I don't know what the thoughts were when they saw the door close on its own, though. But in this day that we live in now, it's the same. You know, Christ is the ark. Get into the ark that you might be saved. And if you don't, the door is going to close. Judgment is going to come. Because he's righteous and true and just. It says in Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews 1, says these words, verses 8 and 9. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. You understand, he says, when the, the father's speaking to the son, and he's telling the son that his throne, that the son's throne, he says, he's, unto the son, he says, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The father speaking to the son, and he's actually calling the son God here. And then he's saying that the scepter of righteousness is the scepter of his kingdom. It's interesting how we miss, sometimes miss those things. And then it's really great if you look at verse 9. He says, Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So here's the relationship again. God, he's, telling, he's calling the Son God, but he's telling the Son that he is God. They're one. It's the Trinity. It's, they're one. It's very interesting, and we miss that sometimes because we rush through. But understand that his throne is a throne of righteousness. It's the same. God the Father, his throne is a throne of righteousness and holiness. Here you see, you know, clouds of darkness around about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne in Psalm 97, verse 2. Verse 3 says, a fire goeth before him and burneth up his enemies round about. I, I think that's pretty significant, don't you? I mean, I probably, at that point, if I, if I was reading this for the first time, I would make a decision that I did not want to be his enemy, right? Because I, I sure don't want to experience that. And yet he says here in Psalm 21, let's go to Psalm 21. We're going to look at a, a, several verses here because I think it's kind of important to bear this out, this part of the Lord. And if you get to Psalm 21, let me know. Okay. Verses 8 and 9. Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. That's pretty specific. That's pretty clear, unmistakable. You don't want to be an enemy of God. It will end badly. Amen? But he doesn't stop there. He has something else to say. Psalm 50. Psalm 50, 5 zero. Verse 3, our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him. 
and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. You know, when the Lord comes, a fire is going to devour before him. You know, we read about the enemies of the Lord. They're destroyed by fire. The ones that when Gog invades and comes around in Ezekiel 38, you read about that, 37, 38, you read about them being destroyed. The Lord speaks the word. They're, they die, burnt up, fire from heaven. Bad day for them. Don't be with those guys. Come out from among them, touch not the unclean thing. I think that's what he says in his word. I think we should probably listen to that. Amen? Deuteronomy 32, going back to Deuteronomy again. I think this is really interesting if you read this, Deuteronomy 32, what God is saying here. It started at verse 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. I, you know he's talking about us, by the way. We're, we're the foolish nation. That's, that'd be us, Gentiles. He's going to move Israel to jealousy because they failed to obey him. They started following idols. So he said, okay, you made me jealous. Now I'm going to make you jealous. He gave us a relationship with Christ. We have a closer relationship with Christ. Do you understand that you have a closer relationship with Christ than they did in the, in the Old Testament? You understand when the Old Testament prophets were out there that the, the Spirit of God came upon them, but in the New Testament, he puts his Spirit in you. In you. No longer are you just, you have to go to the temple, now you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. That's a whole different relationship. And so he said he's going to make Israel jealous, and yes, most certainly he did. Read the next verse. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Any wonder why Peter had something to say about this in 2 Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3. Verses 10 through 12, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Aren't you so glad that he's going to burn up this present world? Aren't you so glad that the things that are all messed up here are not going to be a thing anymore? He's going to burn it all up. He's going to make brand new heavens and earth, and you get to be there. Praise God, you get to be there. I think you should be rejoicing about that because the fact of the matter is you get to be there. Praise the Lord. Not everybody on the earth right now can make that claim, but you can because you know Jesus Christ. You, you know that you have eternal life in Christ, and that should be something that excites you because as gorgeous and as beautiful as that sunset was yesterday, it pales in comparison to what God is going to make. It pales in comparison because this is a fallen creation, and if that much beauty comes out of a fallen creation, imagine one that is not fallen. Imagine one that God makes brand new, where there is no unrighteousness, where God himself dwells in the presence of men. Imagine how beautiful that's going to be, and you get to be there. Praise God, you get to be there. I don't know if you're excited right now or not. I can't tell, but I, tell, I can tell my heart. My heart is rejoicing. Yes, thank you, Joe. Joe is jumping up and down up there. Thank you, Joe. Amen to that. Praise God. That is how excited we need to be. We get to be there. Praise God. It's okay to get excited. It's okay to rejoice in the God of your salvation. It's okay to say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. There it is. There it is. Praise the Lord. Yes, God is good. Yes, God is great. 
and we need to rejoice in him. He said, a fire goeth before him and burneth up his enemies round about. His lightnings enlightened the world the earth saw and trembled. The earth, the, the hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord. Do you know it's interesting? Do you remember the Sinai thing? We saw the in, burnt and they're like, oh, you know, is the earth, yeah, this was the ocean floor. Yeah, and, except it was only that mountain, right? That's kind of weird. You say, oh, the other mountains are like this. Oh, really? Because when you break the rock open, it's been melted. Tell me how that works. How does that work? What, what does it take to melt granite? It's, it's got to be kind of hot, don't you think? The amazing thing about it is that it's, it's enough to scar that, that mountain. It's enough to melt these mountains like, like wax. And yet God is able to preserve Moses in his very presence in the midst of that. God is amazing. And you're like, well, how does that work? Well, ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm sure they'll tell you. When he's there, he's got you. Midst of the fire, not a problem for God. Not a problem. If it's his will for you to walk out of that, you're going to walk right out. If it's, if it's his will for you to come to, to be with him forever, you guess where you're going. Amen? It's all about trust. It really is all about trust. Do you trust him? If you trust him, you say, Okay, Lord, whatever state I'm in, I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be glad. I'm going to be thankful. You've got this. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but you do, and I'm okay with that. Live for him today and work for him today. Tomorrow you might be in his presence. Who knows? That wouldn't be a bad thing, would it? Whatever day he calls us home, we should go with rejoicing and be glad. For a Christian, there's no sadness in, in going to see Jesus. While we're here, this is the time we actually have some sadness going on because we're not with him. It's not because the world is so hard. The world is hard. Everybody experiences that. But the fact of the matter is you're waiting for your Lord. You're looking for your Lord. You're, you're yearning for his return. If you read um, Song of Solomon, you see that that yearning is there in Song of Solomon. That's what, that's what is going on in that psalm. If you read, if you read Song of Solomon in that song, you know, it, it's, it's that yearning for the Lord. That same yearning that we should have. Waiting for him. Not idly. Talking to people. You know, there's even witnessing in there. You know, have you seen my beloved? You know, have you, have you seen the one whom I love? Have you, that's, you know, that's witnessing. Have you seen Jesus? Do you know him? He's the love of my heart, my soul. That's how we should be in this world. Amen? Okay. All right. Continuing. The heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory. Then, you know, I, I was thinking about how, how the Psalms, you know, talk about this. Psalm 19, you know, it, it, I'll just, you can go to it, please. But Psalm 19 says something about that, too. Are you there? The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out throughout all the earth, and their words unto the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. You know, the heavens declare the glory of God. And, you know, what's interesting to, to me is how it says, Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. Um, and they do, they testify of, of God. But even more interesting to me on that same note is the fact that they pick up noise from the stars, from creation itself, noise. I wonder if that's praise going on in, by the stars, the very stars themselves praising his, his goodness and his greatness, giving him glory. It's really neat. Okay. Verse 7, warning. 
confounded be all they that serve graven images and boast themselves of idols and uh, boast themselves of idols. Worship him, all you gods. So listen, don't follow graven images. Don't go after things that are not God. Don't, don't get sidetracked into being deceived that way. The children of Israel did that, and it ended badly for them. There was, a, there was some hard lessons because they, they went that route. Don't go that route. Don't open the door to the enemy. And if there's some idols in your heart, in your life, get rid of those things. Don't hold on to them. You don't need them. You need the Lord. You need, you need to be with the Lord Jesus. So anything that's not like him, cut it out. If that's grabbing your attention, get rid of that. Get your eyes on Christ and follow him. Sometimes it's hard because people build idols and, and make idols. And matter of fact, when I was a little kid, they sent me an idol. Believe that or not. My parents were in, my mom was in Thailand. They sent, sent, a, sent a boat and an idol. I, yeah, it was wood. I don't know, I don't know, uh, I don't have it anymore. I would have burned it many, many years ago if I still had it. Pretty sure it got destroyed somewhere, but um, I don't know, my grandmother's house. But idols, why pollute the world with idols? And yet we do that when we make men more than they are. Men are fallen. Men need a redeemer. His name is Jesus, and he is the one that we glorify, and he is the one we lift up. Politicians are not the answer, and there's people today looking at politicians saying, oh, if this politician gets in office, everything's going to be good. Let me tell you, it's not going to change anything because the nature of man needs to be changed in the heart, and the only one that can do that is Jesus Christ. He is the only one that can change, truly change man. Politicians can't do that. Pray for them, but don't have unrealistic expectations that they're going to change everything. It's not going to be better. It never is. The world is going in a downward spiral. And thank God the Redeemer is coming. Jesus is coming. Before he comes, though, the Antichrist will come and claim to be Christ. So be wary. Don't be deceived. It says here that... Um, it says here that Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of thy judgments, O Lord. For thou, Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. You know, he is exalted. He is lifted up. There, all the gods of the world, all those things that people worship, all the idols, they're demons. They're, they're, not, they're not God. They're, they have, they, they're fallen angels. They're demons. So don't... don't Get deceived. Don't go after that. Also, ye that love the Lord hate evil. We should read that again. Verse 10. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. You know what your job is to hate evil. Not to, not to embrace it. Not to, you know, there's such a trend today of, of Christians going after things that are evil video games and television shows and movies that are evil, clearly evil, or, or clothing with skulls and, and, and demonic things on them and wearing those, and, and they're Christians doing this. Oh, I know there's a, there's, a, there's a time coming next month that there'll be churches decorating their churches with jack-o'-lanterns and everything else in their parking lots doing trunk or treat out of their, the, out of their cars celebrating evil when we're supposed to be preaching the gospel we're supposed to be reaching the lost we're supposed to depart from evil not look like it not dress like it not act like it we got a magazine in from oriental trading i couldn't believe it as i looked at the front of that i couldn't believe it, it was it was it was glorifying ghosts and then it was like oh we don't have ghosts we have the holy ghost i'm like blasphemy they're blaspheming god i mean right on the front there's a little ghost figure on that display and christians be careful because satan tries to make it look like oh it's fun it's not fun it's not fun to <laughs> blaspheme his name 
Better be careful with that. He's God. He's not some cheap thing that you, you just, he's God. Reverence his name. Reverence him. Remember who he is. He is the one that the fire, the, the fire devours before him. Remember who you're dealing with. And avoid all appearance of evil. That's what the Bible tells us. How can we act like the world and do the things that the world's doing and think that that's okay with God? It's not okay. I'm telling you, all of those things are to take you away from him. It's what it's all about, to distract you and, and get you your eyes off of him and onto the things of this world. It, it is absolutely a trap. Just look and see. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. God wants you to have light and understanding. You're not walking in darkness anymore. Jesus is the light. You're walking in Christ, and Christ is in you. You no longer walk in darkness. So look around and see. Don't fall into the traps. You have the light of his word to guide you. So use it. And you'll avoid those things that the enemy has set up as traps, because they are. He wants to deceive you. He wants to get you away from Christ. If he can just make you ineffective for Christ, that's what he does. That's what the enemy of our souls, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Steal your witness and your testimony to, you know, to, to kill any good that would come out of you to, to help people. Not that we're good, God's good, but anything that you would do, he wants to stop. He wants to destroy everything and anything. He knows his time is short. He knows God doesn't lie. He's the liar, not God, and he knows where he's going. He's trying to do everything he can to avoid it, but he's still headed to the lake of fire. In his time, in the Lord's time, that will happen. Satan has a day that he will no longer afflict mankind. His time's running out, and he knows it. So he's going to be a lot, a lot more angry and a lot more busy trying to do anything frantically to not end up in the lake of fire. But it won't help him. That's where he's going. But understand that in all of that, you're a target. That's why Christians avoid these things, fall into those traps. We walked through the store yesterday to buy some things. That we were at Walmart walking through, and they're already setting up their Halloween displays already 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 ready to deceive another generation of kids rejoice in the lord you righteous and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness and we should give thanks at all times to his holiness we should rejoice in him and be thankful in him I know that we get tired, like physically tired. There are times that each one of us gets physically tired, but even in our physical fatigue, rejoice in him. Thank God for sending Jesus. Praise his name, even in the times of our weakness or in the times of our strength, rejoice in him. Rejoice that you know where you're going. Rejoice that there's a new day coming, a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. Rejoice in that. Even at those times that you feel kind of wore out, think about that. Think about where you're headed because you know the one who's taking you there and his name's Jesus Christ. Follow him all the days of your life. Keep your eyes on Christ. Not on the things of the world, not on men, but on Christ. And follow him. Amen? Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you and glorify your name today. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for what you're doing, and thank you for what you're going to do. Help us to glorify you in, in our lives and through our lives. And Lord, we thank you for your word that does not, cannot, and will not fail. Lord, thank you for reminding us tonight that there is a battle being fought. 
and we must follow you all the days of our lives. If our, our hope is in you, our trust is in you, and we know that you have us, and Lord, we are, we are so grateful for that. But we ask that you would use us to reach others that don't know you. Help us to open our lips boldly and proclaim the good news of the gospel to as many as we can while we can. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. You have a good night.